This is a brief uh, demonstration and tutorial of the technician's device on Garage Hive Business Central. Um, I'm just going to showcase some of the features um, and just some of the common tasks that you'll be performing. So this is the first page that you'll come to when you sign into the app. Um, you can download the app on the Play Store or on the Apple Store. Um, it's called uh, Microsoft Dynamics Business Central. Uh, you will need to enter the server address um, and you'll need to enter your username and password. Now, when you log in, this is the first screen that you'll be presented with. You'll do a lot of your work from this tile called Easy Clocking, but I'll mention what, what the features of these tiles are down here. So you've got the ability as a technician to see all the vehicles that are on site. Uh, you can also, if you click on the jobs, you can actually see the key numbers as well, if you guys use key numbers. There's a feature where you can actually view the vehicles that are staying on site as well. So if the service advisor marks that vehicle as staying overnight, um, this tile will be populated with all of those vehicles. So you just get a list of the vehicles that are staying overnight, quite a nice feature. Uh, and then you just get a broad overview of all the job sheets in the system. So you won't work from these an awful lot. They're more for information. They're not actually interactive. Um, you'll do a lot of it from easy clocking. But before we go into easy clocking, we're just gonna to go to the menu at the bottom. So by default, you're on your home page. The next button along, um, this is where you can embed your Power BI reports. So things like efficiencies and recovery rates that can all be put onto this page here. This is where you sign out, this button here. Then on the left hand side, you've just got a few other options, but again, you will rarely go into here. Um, this is something that I just, advise that you don't really go into this area. You can do if you want, but most of what you'll need will be for easy clocking. So we're gonna to go to the easy clocking tile. This is where you start and finish work. So um, arrival first thing in the morning and leaving last thing at night. This is where you clock in and out of work. So when you arrive in the morning, you simply tick this button here and you're now working and this will be reflected on the schedule. So the workshop controller will now be able to see uh, that you're available for work um, and you don't currently have any jobs started. So to view your uh, list of jobs, uh, you go to My Tasks and this is where you're presented with a list of jobs. So the jobs will be in uh, time order, um, but they'll also be in status order. So the idea is that the job at the top of the list will always be your next job, um, which is this one here. So um, we can see the jobs pending. You see we've got a few symbols as well so this is quite specific to each company and these can be tailored but in general um, the key is simply just telling you the key number the green tick means the vehicle is on site and the clock means that it's normally a time precious job um, so there's normally like a, an end time the vehicle needs to be ready for uh, this moon symbol is simply the vehicle staying overnight it corresponds with that tile which we've just spoken about and this red X here, this just means this vehicle's not yet arrived. When the vehicle arrives, you, you get this green tick. So to access a job, uh, you just simply click on a job and you can either start the task or open the job sheet. Um, in this case, we're gonna start the task. And that will simply back on the easy clocking page, um, populate my current tasks. So you can now see that you're clocked into this job. You can't clock into concurrent jobs. So you can only clock into one job at a time. So from this stage, if you want to um, go into the detail of the job sheet, all you do is simply click on the body here and you're now in the job sheet. So from a job sheet, you get the vehicle details, uh, the job type, um, you can enter the mileage here. You can view the comments and you can view the lines on the job sheet. So to view the comments, you select here and you go through to the comments section. Now the comment section is purely for internal communication. So this is where your advisor are gonna write you instructions on what you need to do with the job, but it's also where you can add comments back. So to add a comment, you simply click the tick down here and you can just write, we'll just write test comment. And you just simply press the back button and it will save the comment for you. And to edit the comment, you just simply select the comment. So the other, thing that you can look at are the document lines. So the document lines are things like the parts and labors, etc. So uh, what we can see here is we've got tie fitting, uh, full service, oil filters, synthetic oil, antifreeze. You'll see the part numbers as well. 
Uh, and one of the features on the technician's device is the ability to actually tick the certain parts that you've done. Um, so you don't only tick the labor lines, but you can also tick that you've fitted certain parts. So you see where you've got this technician confirmed text here and this tick box. Um, so to tick it, you don't actually click here. You have to click on the line and you go through to the second page and that's where you can select confirmed. Now confirmed is really important because it means the advisor is aware that you've actually done that part of the job. Um, two really important things. Um, ticking that box, you're going to claim the labor. So when we're talking about reporting and looking at recovery rates, it's really important that you tick this box because this is how you assign that labor to yourself. Uh, and again, likewise with fitting parts, um, you actually select, you, you tick the parts that you've fitted. A uh, couple of good reasons. Again, if a different technician takes over this job, he can see what, what you've fitted. But if there are choices of parts, and you don't tick the ones that you haven't fitted, then your advisors and controllers are going to know which parts to send back or which parts to remove from the job sheet. So it doubles up. So again, to, to tick confirmed, you select the body, press the confirm button and go back. So we'll just go back to the job sheet. So from the job sheet, you've got a couple more options as well. So down here and it, the layout changes whether you're on a tablet or depending on the size of the phone, the layout could be slightly different. But even so, from the job sheet, um, select these three buttons. They'll be somewhere on the screen and you get through to uh, some additional features. Uh, so we'll just have a quick look at the vehicle card. The vehicle card is a place for all of the vehicle information, um, VRM driven, uh, some of it manual input, some of it automated. We also have picture management. So from within here, this is where you can add pictures. Again, you select the three dots down here. Um, I'm actually doing this on a PC. If I was on a device, I would have a take picture option here as well. Uh, we have online map. This is this is for people who are uh, mobile. So if you're a mobile fitter or a mobile tie fitter, um, the online map will take you to the delivery address of the job. <clears throat> We've got engine details. So this is a shortcut to the engine section of the vehicle card. It is the same data from the vehicle card, but it's just a shortcut. Um, same with tires, wheels and brakes. This is where we recommend that you put your tire sizes in. You've got uh, things such as lock and wheel not location, uh, brake type, minimum thicknesses, etc. Really useful information to store permanently against that vehicle. So the next time the vehicle's in, um, that information's already saved. <coughs> Excuse me. We've also got, this is where you do the vehicle inspection. Now there's a there's a different video on how to do inspections, um, which I'll link in the description, uh, but essentially you select show vehicle inspection. Um, you select the type of inspection that you want to do. So for example, if we selected a tire check, it's very simply just a traffic light system, but I'll link the video, which goes into a bit more detail about inspections. You've got the ability to view the vehicle history as well. So you can actually see when things were last fitted, what was done on the last service, and you have a search function as well. For example, if I just search for air filter, it's going to filter to back to the filters and I can see when they were fitted. And last but not least, uh, we've got MOT history. So you can actually view the previous um, MOT advisories, passes and failures as well from within the app. So that's all the information from the job sheet. Again, when you are working on a job sheet, you must always do it via easy clocking. So if you go through any of these other tiles, you don't get all those features that we've just been over. You've got to go through easy clocking. So again, once you're clocked onto a job, you select the body of the job here like this. So I'm just going to uh, go um, on break as an example. So if you're clocking onto break times, you don't have to pause the job or complete the job. You simply just press on break and that will pause your current job. So you see how the writing's gone red and you are now on a break. Um, so you've had your break, it's 15 minutes later and you want to come back to work. Well, you very simply complete the break by pressing the tick button and then you resume your job by pressing the play button. It's very important that you resume the job. If you don't resume the job, the system's gonna consider you idle. 
Uh, and you'll notice here that we've also got the ability to pause a job. So um, the theory behind pause is only pause a job if it's within your control to go back onto that job. If you need one of your advisors or your managers to actually um, do something about the job, let's say you're waiting parts or you require some additional authorization, it's strongly recommended that you complete the job, which is pressing this tick button here. Don't pause the job. If you pause, it's quite reasonable for the advisor and the workshop controller to assume that you are pausing it temporarily within your control. If you complete the job with the right comments, then the advisors and controllers are prompted to do something about the job and perhaps they'll reallocate the job to you later on in the day. So to complete the job, um, all we have to do is press the tick button here. So now I'm back to idle. And if we take a look back at my tasks, we'll see that we've got the two versions of the job finished because I went on to the break time. The system created me a new allocation. Well, both those allocations are now finished and I'm ready to go on to my next job. So if I click on the job, again, if I wanted to look at the job before I started it, I can just open the job sheet and actually see the information on the job. I can view the comments, for example, and then I can then decide, right, I'm going to clock onto that job. So click it again and click start task. And now I'm on to my next job. And that's pretty much it from the from the advisor uh, from the technician side. So again, it looks slightly different on a tablet, but the buttons are all in the same place and it does behave in the same way. It just just looks slightly different. Um, if you've got any questions, just feel free to uh, pop them in the uh, comments. I'll do my best to answer. Thank you.